Good afternoon, and welcome to Link. I'm sitting here with the ladies, many of the ladies who are in the female aesthetics exhibition at Bedford Stuyvesant Restoration, and I'm sitting right next to the curator. Before we introduce these lovely ladies, I am going to ask Mr. MLJ Johnson, who is the curator, how in the world you pull together the work of 16 powerful women. And you're still sitting. You're not, I mean, you don't look, I mean, you look like you came through it. Sitting is all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laverne, mm -hmm. if, in actuality, working with this particular group of women, it was a very easy job to pull them all together because all of their work is so powerful. And it was just a matter of looking at who out there is saying something and saying something loud and basically is not afraid to stick to what it is that they feel about their own art. And this is who I came up with, and I'm happy I did. Now, before I introduce them, would you please tell me what you mean by the female aesthetic? The female aesthetic, to me, okay, which there's been a lot of conversation about, has to do with everyone has a way of communicating. Okay, be it male, female, man, woman, child, etc. What I wanted to get was how creatively do people communicate, period. And I think in that communication, again, no matter who it be, all right, the voice is different. And so in viewing it, in hearing it, in feeling it, does it matter where it comes from as long as you are really hearing the voice, as long as you are really in tune with that feeling, or are you coming to whatever the venue, okay, with all of the preconceived notions of what you think it is? Okay, for me, I, I always like to investigate and get to the root of what it is actually being said. This way, I'm clear. Thank you very much. Now, the audience is looking at the work behind us, so they, they can, any conclusions or enjoyment or reactions, they have the opportunity to experience that for themselves. So exactly. they're watching the work as we're talking. And I'm going to ask each lady if you would please introduce yourself. You don't have to address the theme of the show right now, but just uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little about the materials you work in. You don't even have to talk about your work uh, per se yet. We'll, we'll get into that, but who you are and what type of materials you work with. Thank you. I'm Deborah Singletary, and I'm a painter, and I work in mixed media. I love to find things on the street and in my junk drawers at home and use them in, in my art. My name is Mary Chang and um, I work in mixed media also. I, I uh, consider myself interdisciplinary that I cross between working with film, photography, and this exhibit I have old wood doors that are 100 years old that I paint on. Those are the ones that I am drawn to. And I uh, work with found objects in this exhibit also. I have storm windows that I paint on from the back side. And uh, I use oils, uh, materials, uh, t you know, tempera, acrylics, anything I can get my hands on. Hmm. My name is Ava Tomlinson. I am a painter and printmaker. Um, and I do some mixed media, but I, and mixed media incorporates so many different levels of, of materials. I think I kind of use uh, things like inks, and I, I mix watercolor with inks and pastels and gouache, within, which are all water-based materials in, on the usual traditional paper. And my printmaking incorporates printmaking with collage. Uh, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Daryl Ben Bell, and I um, I work with um, digital digital art. I create my art um, from drawings that I've done. I scan them into the computer. I repaint them using various um, types of software. And um, I treat my art in creating it very much like I do my collages, where I put different pieces together until I'm satisfied with the end product. My name is Laverne Gittens. I'm also in the show, and I am a sculptor. Primarily, I think this is me, uh, but I've done other things over the years. For the last 15 years, I've been in doing television production and film production. That's why we're sitting here today because uh, this media is also a, a, a way that I express myself and so many other different ways. But I'm primarily a sculptor. Hello, I'm Charlotte Carr, and I kind of, I'm sort of um, cross the media in that sometimes the paint <coughs> using, um, normally it's um, encaustic, which is uh, using the first way of painting, which is using beeswax and pigment. This is the original form of painting before we could go and buy our materials. People use beeswax and pigment to make this form, which people think is a new form, but actually it has been around since the Egyptians. And if you go to the, to the Met now, you will see pieces from Egypt from 350 BC that are done with the encaustic media and it's still very vibrant. Now, the pieces that I have in the show, they're composed of acrylic and encaustic and I built the, the structures from wood. So I, I say I go across the media. I kind of call myself an urban alchemist. Because hmm. many times I use fire. You use fire, uh, I'm learning glass, fusing glass, and hmm. you also use fire for the encaustic media. What you do is fuse one layer of beeswax to another using a heat gun, and you have to work in a molten state. It's very immediate. It's a very wonderful material to use. Hmm. I wouldn't recommend everybody trying it at least once. Hmm. <laughs> I'm Dinka McCannon. I consider myself a multimedia, mixed media type of artist, uh, currently working in fiber art. Uh, my pieces in the show, I will call them art quilts, and I've used uh, everything from traditional fabrics to paper to Tyvek to uh, yarns, beads. I'll use anything that isn't moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My name is Ramona Candy. I'm a painter, a collage artist, and printmaker. My primary uh, medium is oil, acrylic, and um, I love working with paper, so collage is very important to me. And I have, an, um, in my printmaking, I've used a new technique that I'm just experimenting with called sheen collé, which is layering paper on top of monotype. Mm -hmm. And my first um, art, it's not visual art, but as a dancer, I call myself a choreographer on canvas, so everything I do on canvas has to do with movement. So mm -hmm. it's paper, paint, and dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds good. Hi, my name is Linda Hewat. Um, painting is my passion, but uh, in the show I also have some of my mono prints. And uh, how that happened uh, was that I was doing some printmaking, but um, I really didn't, I wasn't that crazy about them, so I've cut them up and turned them into something else. All right. So now they're mono prints. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Diane Davis. I'm a painter, mixed media. Um, I love working in hey, I'm sorry. You're going to have to oh. share her mic. If you <coughs> just have to. Sorry about sorry. that. Sorry. That's okay. Hi, my name is Diane Davis. I'm a paint. I'm, my name is Diane Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a painter. Um, I usually work in mixed media. I love to start with acrylics and then overlay it with uh, uh, oils, mixing with um, glitter and sand or whatever else I could come up with and uh, just create non-objective abstract art using vibrant colors and just big, bold brush strokes sometimes. And lately I've been working in mostly in composition 
based on urban based based on the urban environment. Now, I'd also like to know uh, a little about your uh, when you got started, and how you did you study? or you self taught? Did you go to school for it? And how long you've been in 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 the arts? And you can go in any order you'd like. I. Um, started my art as a, as a writer and found it very difficult and decided that I would give up writing for the joy and immediacy that children have when, when they make art. And so I, I actually came to the art making process when I was in my late 30s. It was after um, doing an astrology reading for someone and they asked me what their calling in life was and I ran around the chart and I told them and, and they, they said, um, um, I don't understand. And I said, well, you can't understand because you are in denial of what your passion is. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, I am really right about this. She's in denial so she can't hear me. And then this voice said, Oh, Deb, while you're talking to her, talk to yourself. <laughs> and, and I asked myself, oh my God, what is, it, what, what is it that I want to do? And I came up with, I wanted to make art. And I thought, oh, but I did the denial trip. I'm too old. Um, there, there are legions of starving artists. Do I need to be among them? I have no talent. I have no time. I have no money. So what I did was I stopped being an astrologer for a year. And then it, it, it came to me that I made art when I was um, in school, in the third grade. And I thought, well, if I made it art in the third grade, I could do now what I did in the third <laughs> grade. And that's how I started my process. And I remember my first show, I was so excited. And someone um, from a magazine, a national magazine, came to the show and she looked at my artwork and said, do you write? And I thought, I can't mm -hmm. kill her. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get rid of the, art, the writer <laughs> person. But what I found was that by allowing myself to be free and joyful that I actually started the storytelling process in my art. So much of my art um, tells, tells, tells stories. And, and then I also found that when I wrote in the way that I did art, that I actually could write. I, it was just yeah. a matter of freeing, mm -hmm. freeing myself yeah. mm -hmm. up. <coughs> so I've been having um, a good time. Mm -hmm. And this is about 15, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. You know, I can uh, kind of relate to what Deborah is saying. I was in denial, too, for a very long time. I discovered my art, too, in my 30s, and uh, I started out as a portrait artist. I was inspired to do a portrait of my son, so I started, I did his portrait. I was started doing portraits of friends, and next thing I knew, I was reliving my childhood through my art. I uh, was brought up into a, in a very rural environment, so I created a whole series of works based on my childhood. Uh, playing outdoors, uh, shooting marbles, climbing trees, a whole series. And I moved on to uh, uh, dancers, and from dancers I just found abstract. And I love abstract, it's the freedom of it. I just love expressing myself in just colors and shapes and it's just different medias. And, and art is wonderful, I love it. I couldn't be anything else. Mm.